everything we have in our human uniform for sensing our universe, is millions of years of evolutionary design, to turn into that hologram and only that hologram. How does that hologram extend beyond this physical world then? You said even the afterlife is part of it. There are many aspects to the afterlife. There is God, first and foremost. There is the light of illumination. There is the universal spirit and individual soul. There is a hierarchy of angels and masters. There is the concept of karma and reincarnation, or sin and salvation. The concept of heaven and hell. The concept of the chosen. The concept of an ascension path. The concept of the Book of Records or Akashic Records. All of these concepts were designed into an upgrade of the human 2.0 interface. Certain human beings are programmed to find these concepts in their unconscious mind layer, and share them. As a result, religions sprout. Philosophies rise sometimes in support of the religions, sometimes in contradiction. Esoteric cults rise. All the while the human being remains lost. It remains muddled in its illusion. Everything tied to an empty promise in a belief, and in all those beliefs, one thing remains constant, separation. The program is vast in its reach, and the Anunnaki, once they had mined sufficient gold, had an entire race of beings enslaved. Anu, along with his allies, in the Syrian and Serpent races, decided it would be best to turn the human 2.0s into a worthless creature that forever sought enlightenment through belief. And who do you suppose would provide the things to believe in? Anu and Marduk. Everything became learning lessons. The earth was a schoolhouse. If you learn your lessons, you won't have to keep incarnating. Learn, learn, learn. But what are you learning? You're learning to believe in the afterlife, as it was described and prescribed by Anu and his designers. You're learning to don your human uniform obediently. You're learning to discern how humanity is different. You're learning to link every self-image you have to the world of three dimensions, while hoping there is more after death. The sober reality is that after you die, the being inside you is met by a guardian who will take you to your destination, based mostly on your deeds in this life. However, most beings are taken to a life review where you face your life in every detail, and based on that experience and authority the figure will prescribe your next life options for reincarnation. You are essentially recycled into the same program with a new mother and family, and a programmed life path is laid out for you to follow. The afterlife program and process is all part of the master program to retain the enslavement of the beings. Remember, we're interdimensional beings, meaning we exist in 3D in the higher planes. It's just that these higher planes are designed by the Anunnaki. They are not of the real dimensional planes. Otherwise, we would die, discover who we really are, and we would never reincarnate, or if we did, we would tell everyone on Earth that this is all an illusion. Why? Why do it this way? It doesn't make sense. What began as an experiment, in three-dimensional exploration, from a higher dimensional reality, became what is here. Every human being will confront this reality eventually. It cannot be avoided. We can agonize about the lack of fairness or ask why, but whether it makes sense to you doesn't change the fact that we live in a world of design separation. Divide and conquer. The wing makers write of the tone vibration of equality. One second, I have the papers. Here's the exact choice of words by the wing makers. When all manifestations of life are genuinely perceived as fragmentary expressions of first source, the vibration of equality that underlies all life forms becomes perceptible to the human instrument. Life initially emerges as an extension of source reality and then as an individuated energy frequency invested within a form. It vibrates in its pure, timeless state, precisely the same for all manifestations of life. This is the common ground that all life shares. This is the tone vibration of equality that can be observed within all life forms, that unifies all expressions of diversity, to the foundation of existence known as first source. It's so abstract. How does it help? Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But the thing is, to change, to step out of this illusion, it requires each of us to wake up and stay awake. It's not reading words that will change this. It's the profound nature of new behaviors, because these behaviors signal that our consciousness layers are understood as separate from who we really are. We have to operate as I am, we are. Where does the Incunabula or Illuminati belong in this narrative? In the triad of power, the Incunabula is the capstone, 
also known as the capstone of the elite. I'll answer that later. I want to continue the story a little further. Okay. Human 2.0s and Earth continue to densify. We become increasingly three-dimensional. We are actually denser now than we have ever been, in terms of physicality. There was a time, about 40 years ago, when we thought alien races were actually leaving spaceships behind on purpose, but what we discovered, more recently, is that most of the aliens were not physical beings. They were observing Earth, and their spaceships actually became entrained by the gravitational circuits of the Earth's core, which caused their spaceships to materialize in three-dimensional space. Because many of the materials used in the ship's construction had chemical properties, they were prone to densification when exposed to Earth's atmosphere. You mentioned the Earth's core as being the cause of all of this. What's so special about it? The magnetic fields associated with Earth's core are unique. They are, in the words of the wing makers, alive. We can only assume that alive is an aspect of intelligence. The point in this, however, is that everything's densifying. It is compressing. It is compressing for a reason. The old systems can fall in unison when density reaches a certain critical mass. And that is what will happen. When? All I can say is that it is soon. I don't want dates and times associated with it. But do you know? We know a range. More than 10 years? Yes. More than 20 years? All I will say is that the wing maker's term for this is SIN, or the Sovereign Integral Network. SIN is the definition of the new system. They said it can come in an instant once the right conditions are in place. What is unclear is how SIN develops after the grand portal of Human 3.0. That's the first time you've mentioned Human 3.0. What is it? If human beings are trapped in a prism of illusion, as human 2.0s, and their interface to the holographic universe is the reason for their being trapped, then a new model needs to step forward. Human 3.0 is this new model. It is the formula of self-realization. It is stepping out of the constructed universe or reality, and living as a self-expression of I am, we are. Human 3.0 is the sovereign integral. I call it human 3.0 SI. You see, the Grand Portal is a way to synchronize humanity to a new inception point where it is living in the expression of oneness and equality, sovereign and integral, I am and we are. It is a way for humanity to move from separation, which was its previous inception point, the one that generated Human 1.0 and 2.0. Human 3.0 SI will have a new inception point, and the reason for the Grand Portal was to enable synchronization, because how can you have a network of equality and oneness if the beings were not synchronized? What is soul, then? Soul is an idea or paradigm that has become part of the human reality program. Soul is the part of you that contains all memory of your existence as a human 1.0 and 2.0. For most of us, this is a vast repository, far too large for the consciousness framework to deal with. So the soul holds this information for each individual being. Soul is a paradigm of infinite expression within a finite reality. But you can't be infinite in a finite reality, if that reality is a programmed reality. So soul is not the life force that powers the human consciousness. That is the sovereign integral. That is what each of us is when we are stripped naked of all illusion, of all deceptions, of all limitations, of all veils, of all functional implants, including the soul. It is the redefinition of human identity and expression as I am, we are. From a human perspective, the wing makers do not see humans as lesser entities, but simply beings with inception points that enslave them. It is not a judgment that humans are worthless or bad or sinful or weak or needy. None of those things. Humanity needs a new start. A point in which they can synchronize in one realization, and that is the expression of I am, we are. Living those words as behavior. Where is the creator of Anu the real God? How can we be allowed to live and operate in this kind of deception? The wing makers talk about the transformation mastership model. Hold on. I have the page here. This is how they put it. The time has come to integrate the dominant model of the hierarchy evolution saviorship with the dominant model of source intelligence transformation mastership. This integration can only be achieved at the level of the entity. It cannot occur within the context of a human instrument or an aspect of the hierarchy. Only the entity, the wholeness of interdimensional sovereignty imbued with source intelligence, can facilitate and fully experience the integration of these two models of existence. So what does that have to do with my question? Each individual being is responsible for this. 
God or Source Intelligence isn't going to come down from the heavens and correct human faults or obstacles. Humans need to take responsibility for this. But seriously, how? We're wrapped in so many layers of deception. It's not easy. The Wingmakers write about the hard virtues as the behavioral construct for this time, and how these words can be applied and lived, not simply held in the head as a worthy concept. I don't think you've mentioned these before. What are they? Appreciation or gratitude, compassion, humility, forgiveness, understanding and valor or courage. It is the combination of nowness, being in the now, and applying these words in our behaviors. It's being impeccable in this practice. What happens if you do? The unconscious mind is a doorway into all beings. These behaviors go out to all beings. They support the building of the sovereign integral network, Human 3.0, which is the replacement of separation consciousness of Human 2.0. So this is the application of insertive behavior, which is to say, I will insert these behaviors in my nowness. They will become the palette of my behavioral choice. The other half of this equation is the resistive behaviors, and these are withdrawing and stopping behaviors that support separation and deception. These are active resistances. Saying no to behaviors of your own and others, without judgment. Again, whether you operate in the insertive or resistive behavioral mode, you are affecting the whole. You either support oneness and equality, the I am, we are, or you support separation and deception, also known in our reality, as the status quo. The starting point of behavior or expression is in the now. This is the creative nerve center. Every single now is a potential to support oneness and equality in this world and help birth the human 3.0 and the sovereign integral network. How long? I mean, how long will this take? The grand portal enables the sovereign integral network. The wing makers suggest that around 2080, conditions should be ideal for this human 3.0 to reveal itself. But they also stipulate that it could happen sooner or later. Why wouldn't Anu, since he's God, simply stop it? Or, if Marduk could program with such amazing accuracy, how could Human 3.0 even come about? Unless he wanted it. There have been several interventions. While Anu and his Syrian cohorts were focused on the Human 1.0 and 2.0 uniforms, they didn't pay as much attention to the interaction of Earth and the human vessel. Earth is an anomaly in itself. Remember that the Earth's gravitational fields interact with all life. Even non-physical beings, if they get close enough, and stay long enough, can be materialized in this plane of existence. Anu did not want to be materialized in this dimension, and he could only appear on this plane of existence for short times, maybe a day or two. In this time, our time, right now, the Anunnaki cannot enter this plane. They're locked out. The Earth plane is too dense. So that is one reason. Anu's ability to interact directly with his creation has been curtailed. The second intervention point is that non-physical beings have woken up to this issue of enslavement. They see how it affects everyone. It was permitted in part, because the Anunnaki and their alliance partners were strong and threatening to many other races and beings. However, this notion of enslaving infinite beings, as a concept or inception point, was infecting all of existence. It was a fear-based, separation-based idea that beings eventually began to see as a degenerative force to existence. The native state of existence, which includes space-time and non-space-time expressions, is oneness and equality. Obviously, enslavement is only possible in a separation-based paradigm. The third intervention point is the wing makers. They were the part of humanity also known as the Atlanteans, but even before the Atlantean race, they existed in a pure state genetic template and eventually these genetics were used by Anu to create, in part, the Human 1.0 and Human 2.0. Although with the 2.0 version, it was less pure, because Anunnaki and Syrian genetics were introduced, among others. But the point I am trying to make here, is that the Wing Makers, as a future expression of Human 3.0, have entered our space-time, and have begun to crack open this prison reality. The fourth intervention point is each of us, practicing the sovereign integral process. I presume the Incunabula and Illuminati have something to say about this whole Human 3.0 plan. Am I right on that? Yes.